it's okay. popping up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my presentation, I'll give you a quick overview of the Rwanda country profile. Also, uh, give an overview of the health system structure in Rwanda, as well as the health insurance schemes in Rwanda. Also, highlighting some of the contributing factors to the health system performance and financial risk protection in the context of Rwanda. Also, highlight some of the sustainability challenges and barriers to access quality healthcare services for families in Rwanda. And also have some key messages for, for Rwanda. So Rwanda is uh, one of the low-income countries. It's uh, located in East African East region, and it has a population of about 13.8 million. And more than 67% of the population are located in rural areas. The insurance coverage is very high and um, quite similar to, uh, to Thailand. Uh, case where we have a very high insurance coverage of more than one percent, but also a, a very Ste high uh, Stella, sorry coverage. to interrupt. Yes. Uh, we yes. can see your screen, but but uh, it's white. There there are there is no text. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Uh, I can share from my side if that works for you, um, okay. Stella. No problem. Yes, for the sake of time, let's use, you can do, you can make a presentation for me. All right, now, now we are yeah. all set. So, yeah, thank you. This is the outline of my presentation. And uh, next slide, please. So these are the country profile. I was uh, giving an overview of the location of the Rwanda in East African region, Sub-Saharan Africa with more than 13.8 million of people and a very high percentage of the population living in a rural area, as well as a very high insurance coverage, where by more than 91% of people are covered by health insurance. And Rwanda has, is one of the countries that have achieved Abuja declaration consistently, uh, spending more than 15% of its budget on health. And though out-pocket payment as a percentage of total health expenditures is still very low, and most of the health facilities are government owned, more than 97% from primary to tertiary level are owned by the government. Next slide, please. So in terms of uh, 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 access to healthcare services, we have different levels of care. We have the primary healthcare, which is composed of a very strong network of community health workers. We have a very big number of health posts, and most of them are operated by qualified nurses. And we have health centers. And this part of health center health posts is called our primary health care level, and currently is covering 90% of the burden of disease uh, in Rwanda. And you have a number of district hospitals offering different type of packages. And in Rwanda, we found that most of there is a very strong integration of healthcare services. And especially uh, the entry point for healthcare services is the primary healthcare composed of community health workers, health posts, and health centers. And given that a strong network of public health infrastructures, one has been able to improve many SDG indicators, and, and we found that most of these achievements can be, can be achieved due to government-led uh, reforms and strategies. Next slide, please. So, uh, as I said, we have more than 91% of the population covered by health insurance, and also due to that very high coverage and high investment in the government, gov high investment in public health infrastructures, Rwanda has been able to keep the catastrophic health spending very low. Looking at the, uh, the slides, you can see that uh, the UHC service coverage were at 54 percent, and we, the only country which is above Rwanda is Kenya and South Africa in the region. And when you look at the uh, catastrophic health expenditure, only less than 2% of the population uh, are impoverished due to uh, household, due to uh, spending to healthcare services. So all these indicators 
were possible to do due to increasing funding for health over time. Next slide, please. Uh, allow me to give you also an, another uh, overview of the health system and the health financing system. We have three main health insurance schemes. And, and the main one is this community based health insurance, which was created in 1999 to cover the informal health workers. And it's, 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 it's financed through many uh, funding sources. We have a voluntary contribution for members. We have government subsidies. We have also some earmarked funding from other existing insurance schemes. We have also another parallel scheme, which is providing coverage for formal and private sectors employees, as well as people in the, uh, in the retirement, especially those who have been contributing to the scheme, also allowed to benefit from Rwanda, and, and uh, compared to those, these two schemes are housed in the same institution, but with different financial capabilities. The CBHI scheme has been struggling financially, while the other one covering the informal work, formal workers has been um, having savings over the years. So uh, it means that you have the rich and the poor uh, schemes in place. But uh, given, the, given the importance of CBHI scheme, governments have been earmarking a lot of resources to ensure the financial sustainability of CBHI schemes over time. Next slide, please. So uh, we are saying that this financial protection was very possible in Rwanda due to uh, uh, very high insurance coverage and also very high government commitment to make it to, to, to finance the health sector. Also, uh, this slide also shows that uh, the Rwanda CBHI scheme has been one of the most successful uh, scheme in the Africa, which has grown from 7% coverage in 2003 and currently we are at 91%. So, and this community-based health insurance scheme is based on one of, is based on traditional values of mutual aid and commu community solidarity, but at the same time, in very strong trust in the state and government policies. Next slide, please. And this slide is showing that the, 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 the primary health care is that it was the practical solutions to improve availability and affordability of health care services. As of now, more than eight services, 8% 8 of the services are accessed at the primary health care level. And there is a very strong uh, referral system in place so that they can minimize abuse in, in use of expensive and specialized health care services. And government has been contracting um, providers on fee for service, but currently to, in order to improve uh, uh, efficiency in, ex in, in spending, we are shifting from fee for service to capitation and DRG in the near future. Next slide, please. Uh, I would say that Rwanda to achieve a very strong financial protection mechanism in place, and also to keep the out-of-pocket spending at the lower level, there was a, I would say that the many factors contributed, not only insurance coverage, but many other factors. These factors can be um, uh, classified into three buckets. One is the allocation of resources, consistent allocation of resources, decentralization, and also coordination of multi-sectoral actions and funding. Another bucket is about performance management and accountability, including that include a very strong active community participation at all levels, uh, investment in information system and digitalization over time to collect routine data, but also to facilitate evidence-based decision making. And also uh, there's also a mechanism to strengthen transparency and accountability over time. In terms of service, as access and readiness and utilization. As I said, we have a very strong primary health care in place, which was uh, improved uh, access to affordable health care. But also we have a very um, specific budget line uh, by the government to ensure, to support, um, to pay the premium for poor people and vulnerable people. It means that if you are in a 
if you are qualified as low income household, you are eligible to affordable cost or to free care at all levels of care. And you have also expansion of primary healthcare infrastructures, especially in rural areas. We have regular review of essential medicine lists and also availability of vaccine and blood components, especially we use drones because we are in a hilly country, we use drones to deliver blood components, but also we have a very strong uh, reforms uh, for healthcare workforce, particularly currently we are talking about a four by four reforms where we are, as a country, we are uh, aiming to, to, to increase uh, the number of qualified staff in four years. And these uh, policy are led and, uh, and championed by the government officials. Next slide, please. Uh, in Rwanda, we still have some sustainability challenges. One of the is increasing demand of the new services, increasing life expectancy, and shift from communicable to non-communicable disease. These these pictures are showing the uh, the main uh, the main cause of death in, 20, in 1999 and and in compares by 2019. So you can see there is a, a, a epidemiologic shift. In Rwanda, and we are moving from non-communicable disease to more from communicable disease to non-communicable diseases, which means that with the improving of life expectancy, uh, the government should be prepared to make additional investment to 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 meet the increasing demand of, of expensive services, but also take care of the aging population. Next slide, please. In terms of other sustainability challenges, I think I said aging population and urbanization. Many people are moving from the, the rural areas to small growing cities. There is a double, double burden of disease. We have insufficient uh, providers who can provide specialized services. We have a rapid pace of technology. The stunting is still a very big challenge in Rwanda, especially among under five children. There's also an emerging of new challenges, including climate change epidemics. Currently, Rwanda is fighting the Mabag epidemics. So we need to have very strong resilience health system to be able to, to, to be able to sustain the health gains I have already presented at the very beginning of my presentation. In terms of next slide, please. In terms of barriers to access quality healthcare services, uh, they still have, have very rigid referral process to, to minimize abuse. Uh, but sometimes uh, uh, referral processes, uh, when they are rigid, they might cause some delays, unnecessary delays to access quality of care. We have a limited number of ambulance services in the country and also long distance to access uh, specialized healthcare facilities. Yeah. facilities. We also have some services which are available in the country, but not yet covered. We have chemotherapy, dialysis, and some prothesis are not, not yet covered by no all health insurances. We have also 9% of the population not yet covered by insurance. Next slide, please. In terms of key takeaways, I would say that um, to have a very, very strong health systems that can really improve uh, the, the lives of the people and keep the ensure and provide financial resources for protection. It requires long term commitment, especially prioritization of, of primary health care in the national policy and also in resource allocation. You also need to have a prepayment financing mechanisms. I would say we need to have very strong health insurance coverage and also um, you also need to address some of the remaining barriers to assist health care. And I also conclude my, uh, my presentation by saying aging and NCD financing is the way, and also strong political commitment is key to achieve, uh, to achieve financial protection and also to address long term need care and also at the same time make health security a reality in low middle income countries. Thanks, Alpha. Thank you for your attention.